One Week Season. Hello, friends, Inner Circle fam. Welcome to the OWS Roster Review Pod for Week 9. I'm your host, Stat ATL. I've got 10 subscriber submitted rosters this week to review, and we're going to hop right in with a roster from Diet Rich. This is a $50 single entry with 5,600 entrants. Diet Rich scored 190.3 points. As you see, this is a Stroud double stack with Nico Collins and Noah Brown, and he brought it back with Rashad White. I also like Stroud and White builds. Um, as you see over here in the Bink machine, I built quite a bunch of them myself this week, mostly with uh, Rashad White. I also had about 2% of my total builds uh, I ran back with Evans. We highlighted this game, the Tampa Bay and Houston, throughout the week as a game that could far exceed expectations. And it was something I even pointed out in my Tuesday first look. So I love starting a, a build with these with these three. Um, bringing it back with Rashad White, I thought was very sharp. This roster also features an AJ Brown and Jake Ferguson mini correlation, which was great. Um, pulling, you know, pieces from the highest implied point total game on the slate, really great. I had both of these guys in my player pool, as we know how susceptible Philly has been to pass catchers. Um, so I loved incorporating Jake Ferguson here in, in this build. And A.J. Brown needs no explanation, along with Tyreek Hill, has probably been one of the best wide receivers in the league this season. Um, roster also has a, a Barkley and Giants D correlation, which I really liked. I used it quite a bit myself. Thought it was really sharp, especially with Waller ruled out. Daniel Jones back to theoretically free up some space for Saquon. So really like that. Um, you've got Jonathan Taylor here as a one-off play. Also really sharp. Uh, personally, Jonathan Taylor was my highest owned running back. And as we'll see, very popular with OWS as well as the field in general, as we're seeing him at 38% owned in this contest. Uh, even though this roster has several chalk pieces between JT, AJ Brown, Barkley, and Giants D, playing Stroud and Noah Brown, both under nine, or excuse me, both under seven percent, with Nico Brown as part of that double stack, made this build unique enough that you could do whatever you wanted. Um, overall, really good construction, nice correlation, and overall a very strong roster. One of my favorites of the submissions this week. Thanks uh, again, Diet Rich, for the submission. The next roster we are going to look at is from Roal2112, also a $50 single entry in the $5,600 contest. This roster scored 134.98 points. It is a Gardner Minshew skinny stack with only JT, and it's got a double bring back with Hubbard and Adam Thielen. So for context, Gardner Minshew has started 41 games and has 566 career rushing yards. That comes out to an average of 13 yards per game. During this career stretch of 41 games, he has four total rushing touchdowns. So I think the perception of him being a more mobile quarterback uh, isn't backed up by the stats. So in my opinion, he requires at least one pass catcher in his builds if he's going to be optimal. Um, then as it relates back to this build, I don't personally love two running backs from the same game as part of a game stack. Um, if both of them, if both JT and Hubbard are getting there, are scoring you 20, 30 points, that's generally taking away from the time for the quarterback in terms of pass attempts, and then as well as the pass catchers that you've got them paired with here um, in terms of receptions. So personally, I wouldn't build a game stack like this. Um, outside of the game stack, all five other pieces have no correlation. You know, you've got great standalone pieces in Adams, CeeDee Lamb, don't mind Logan Thomas or Noah Brown. Um, 
But as JM likes to say, it, do, it doesn't mean that a roster like this can't hit. It's just so much easier to get a five combination lock right versus a nine combination lock. So I'm a big fan of incorporating more correlation into your lineups. So in this lineup, for example, I'd rather see you play Kate Otten instead of Logan Thomas to, to correlate uh, with Brown. Um, both Adams and Lamb, as we talked about, totally okay as, as standalone one-offs. Um, one thing that I really did like about this build is that you were able to get unique by getting three expensive uh, pass catchers in there, all three $7,500 uh, and up between Adams, Lamb, and Thielen. So I like that aspect of this roster as well. Um, thank you for the uh, submission. Next roster we are going to review came from uh, M4 Lord. Um, this was a $10 3 max uh, 4,000 entrant contest. Um, and I do want to say uh, M4 Lord I did send in three rosters, one of which put up 192 points. However, this is the one I wanted to review. Uh, incorporated uh, a unique item that I really, uh, I really liked, and so I wanted to to kind of bring it, uh, bring it to attention. So as you're seeing, this is an Eagles Cowboys game stack. It's built around Dak Prescott. Um, incorporates C.D. Lamb and Ferguson, um, and then brought it back with Swift and Goddard. So I love the idea of an overstack uh, of a game. Uh, especially this one as it carried the, the highest team total of the week by more than a field goal and was really a unique way to build despite all these pieces being relatively popular. So um, I think my, my only feedback to this, uh, this construction is I don't like double tight end builds in a field this size. Um, for reference, Goddard only has one career game over 30 DK points. So at 4,800, I think you sacrifice too much ceiling um, in a field this size, uh, as there are going to be several 4,500 to 5,500 wide receivers that just have a higher frequency of, of ceiling games. Um, on this roster, what really caught my eye um, is that it contains Taylor and Josh Downs without Minshew. Um, on the surface, at first look, I didn't like it. But upon further research, um, if you go back and look at week five and week seven, um, week five was was actually Moss, not JT. But this pairing put up uh, a pairing of a, a Indiana Indianapolis running back as well as Josh Downs put up 48 points and 51 DK points in week five and seven um, and kept you on a 250 point pace both of those weeks. Um, in week three, it only went for it went for just shy of 40 points. Um, however, Downs was only 3,500 at the time, and that would have kept you at a 217 point pace. So I'm calling this out as a player block that I had personally never considered, um, but one that I'm going to keep in mind going forward, either with Pittman or Pierce, uh, or with Downs when he returns from injury. So wanted to call out M4 Lord on this roster submission. Um, it brought this player block to light as one I had never considered, um, but will going forward. Um, and then the last piece on this roster is Jordan Addison. Um, on my Tuesday thoughts this week, I actually wrote up how he, Deontay Johnson, and Terry McLaurin continue to be priced in the 5Ks and see nine targets every week. Um, all of them are too cheap for their involvements in their respective offenses. So um, M4 Lord, thank you for the submission. Really liked uh, a majority of this roster as well. Uh, next up is a roster from FP Cam. Um, it scored 176.7 points. And it is a uh, $27 single entry and the field had 2,100 entrants. So as you see, this is uh, a Stroud skinny stack with Nico Collins, um, and he brought it back here with Kate Otten. Um, 
I really like incorporating the tight end uh, as part of either your stack or bring back, just because we know how hard tight end can be as a position to fill. Um, on this roster, like a lot of OWS members, it features JT. Um, this one had a uh, Mingo mini correlation. Uh, so personally, I played about 10% each of both Mingo and Shark this week as I thought they were like a really good way to differentiate your JT builds at low salary. Um, and since all three Carolina you know, main receivers, Mingo, Chark, and Adam Thielen, have been consistently seeing 90% uh, snap rates. So they're on the field constantly. And Mingo and Chark are just too cheap and have the upside um, that I thought they were sharp plays this week. Uh, outside of that, no more correlation on this roster. Um, it featured Barkley, CD Lamb, Christian Watson, and Browns D. Again, it doesn't mean that this can't hit. It's just it's just harder to do. So again, I'd like to see a little bit more correlation. Um, I think on this build specifically, I'd rather see Swift instead of Barkley uh, to correlate with CD Lamb, um, or uh, at a similar price point, Devonte Adams instead of Lamb for a mini correlation with Saquon Barkley. Um, Final piece as it relates to this roster, Christian Watson. I don't mind him overall as a low-owned dart throw, but in a 2000 entrant tournament, I don't think you have to get that cute, especially playing Stroud and uh, CJ Stroud and Otten. They're both low-owned. I don't, I don't think that you have to throw in a Christian Watson there, but appreciate you sharing the roster and thank you for the submission. Uh, next roster we're going to review came from Degen Air, um, $33 five max, scored 136.78 points in a 5,300 entrant tournament. As you see, this is an Indy and Carolina game overstack. Uh, this time Minshew is paired with not only JT, but Pittman, Michael Pittman. And uh, Degen Air brought it back with Hubbard and Thielen. So similar feedback from the previous roster we reviewed with both Hubbard and JT. I don't love them both uh, as part of a game stack. Um, I think that two running backs from the same game can be played on a roster together. Um, I just wouldn't do it as part of a game stack just because it takes away from the QB and pass catchers. Um, I just think it up, it just limits your upside too much on a full slate. Um, Jerome Ford and Brown's D correlation. I really like um, both pieces, you know, that I, I thought were sharp. Um, you're playing for a Brown's domination against rookie Clayton Toon, and you got that. Um, Ford got 25 touches, um, include seven, you know, I think he had seven targets. So I think this block could have worked out a lot better um, if you had gotten some touchdown variance in your favor. And then finally, the roster features Kate Otten and Chris Olave. Um, both fine pieces that were part of my player pool as well. Um, but kind of part of the theme of the show again this week, um, I'd personally just prefer to see a little bit more correlation. I'd rather see you play uh, Tank Dell or Nico Collins instead of Olave um, to go with the, the Otten correlation. Um, or instead of Otten, maybe play uh, Komet to pair with Olave and then, you know, go down to Josh Downs from Pittman to make the salary fit. Um, thank you for this submission as well. Next roster um, is from OWS member Colby. Uh, this is a $50 single entry uh, as well, scoring 163.56 points. It is a Watson, uh, Amari Cooper and Juku double stack. Um, in a contest this size with only 1,100 entrants, um, that player block probably is 1% or less owned. So I don't mind this. I personally played Deshaun doubles um, with these two, um, so this exact pairing, myself this week. Um, and then kind of once you build a roster like this or start a roster like this, you can do whatever you want with the rest of it. Um, you've got Dallas Goddard and CeeDee Lamb as a mini correlation. Um, However, um, I think the double tight end capture upside and potential for first place, even in an 1136 entrant tournament. 
So uh, theme to the show. I'd, I'd like to see more correlation. You've got Jacobs and JT at running back. They're both strong plays. They can be played as one off. Same for, for Terry McLaurin. Same for Green Bay D. It's just more things that you have to get right if you don't correlate them. So on this roster, maybe get off of McLaurin and go down to Chark to, to correlate with JT. Um, and then use that some of that extra salary um, to get up um, to the Raiders D um, to correlate with Josh Jacobs in hopes of a Raiders smash, which is actually what you got this week. But still, um, I think from a process standpoint, would have been better. Thank you for the submission. Uh, next roster we're going to review comes from Frost6. Um, this is a $15 three max in a 1500 entrant tournament, um, scored 121.38 points. Um, build is a Lamar Jackson double stack with Zay Flowers and OBJ, um, brought it back with Tyler Lockett. Um, this was one of my favorite, uh, submissions of the week as well. Really like this type of build. Um, you're double stacking um a game with the second highest game total on the slate and this game was just overlooked by the field um, all the pieces are low owned especially lockett and uh, odell beckham then features a ferguson and devonta smith mini correlation so you're getting exposure to the dallas and philly game which carried the highest implied uh total on the slate yeah, um, you know, yet on this build, you know, you're getting two of the lower owned skill position players in Smith and Ferguson. Roster also features Stevenson and uh, the Patriots mini correlation. I really liked this as Ramondre is direct leverage off of Demario Douglas, um, who was 30% or 35% owned, depending on your contest. So. I really liked this way of building very sharp um, and, and some good leverage off of a majority of what the field was doing. Only one off in the lineup is Jonathan Taylor. And we've spoken at, uh, ad nauseum now um, about that play, how strong I thought it was, uh, as well as 39.44% of the field. So a really strong build uh, in my opinion. Um, this is a roster that, despite the fact that it only scored 121 points, um, if we played out this slide, uh, this slate 100, 1,000 times, this is a roster I think could take down a tournament. So a uh, great build, and thank you for the submission. Next roster we are going to review comes from Strictly Business. Uh, this is in the 2300 entrance uh, $50 single entry. And roster scored 160.6 points. Uh, Strictly Business started this with a Baker Mayfield double with Rashad White and Cade Otten. Uh, brought it back with Noah Brown. Um, in a field this small, uh, or in my opinion, ever, um, I don't think you have to get to Baker Mayfield. Um, for context, since the start of 2021, which is 35 starts for Baker Mayfield. He's never, not once, put up 25 DK points. I know he's consistent, um, but his ceiling is just really non-existent. Um, and he's not 4K. He's generally priced in the mid to low 5K range. So I, I think the theory is solid. You know, the quarterback, running back, pass catcher from a team, I like think that's a, a solid player back, a player block. You run it back with a wide receiver from the opposing team, uh, Baker Mayfield just isn't it for me personally. Uh, from there, you've got CD Lamb and Swift, which again, I love a mini correlation, especially from the highest projected game on the slate. Um, I like that. The last two skill position pieces on this roster are Kamara and Thielen, um, both solid one-offs. You're not getting any ownership discount on either, you know, 20% and 40% respectively. So I think I'd rather see you play JT instead of Camara for a mini correlation and use that extra salary to get off of the 40% owned Giants defense. Thank you for the submission this week, Strictly Business. Uh, next roster comes from DePeach. 
Uh, this is a five dollar single entry single entry into the nine thousand entered contest. Scored one hundred and fifty one point nine six points. Uh, this is a Dak Prescott skinny stack with C.D. Lamb. Uh, brought it back with Devonta Smith. So strong start to kind of build around the highest game total of the week. Yet you got different by playing Smith instead of A.J. Brown. I like that. Uh, next piece of the roster is Nico Collins and, and Kate Otten in a mini stack. Um, I like both pieces. Uh, Otten's a nice pivot off higher own bucks plays. Um, and I will say when you're in, uh, you know, a nine, 10,000 entrant tournament or more, it's, it's strategic moves like this that kind of help you smartly differentiate. Um, this roster also has some more correlation with Jerome Ford and Hollywood Brown. Um, however, I don't know that you need to be this cute with multiple 3% or less owned guys. Um, I prefer this correlation, you know, Otten and Nico in a build with AJ Brown uh, at this entrance size. Um, the, the Smith pivot makes Dak Lamb stack like reasonably unique. Um, you know, you got to figure that 7% of uh, AJ Brown, uh, excuse me, Devontae Smith, 7% of his ownership is going to have him paired with Hertz. Um, and then incorporating it as part of a game stack with Dak and Lamb makes this roster pretty unique already on its own. Um, Jonathan Taylor, again, is a one off strong piece. We've covered that, you know, nine times now. Um, so overall, I really like this build. Um, there's nothing that I would change in this build. I think it's better used in the $9 slant, that's 20,000 entrants, or the $5 flea flicker, that's 50,000 entrants. I think that you've got enough differentiation um, with still a lot of correlation on some lower owned pieces that that would be a really great roster for one of those type of tournaments. But uh, great roster. Thank you for the submission to Peach. The next and final roster we're going to talk through uh, comes from OWS member Teach Me How To. Um, this was uh, a three max uh, $150 power sweep, 3,700 entrant contest, scored 159.74 points. It features a Derek Carr skinny stack with Olave. Uh, brought it back with Komet. Um, I'm a little biased. I really like this way of getting unique and incorporating this build. Um, was actually the core of my $27 single entry build. So uh, obviously a, a start to a roster that I really liked. Um, roster also has Jonathan Taylor and Adam Phelan, which by this point in the stream, you know how we felt about both of those pieces. Really approve of that correlation. Uh, the roster then bets on the, the Texans pass catching um, block of Nico Collins and Noah Brown. Um, doesn't have any Tampa bring back. Personally, I'd rather see you play Rashad White instead of Swift uh, for the correlation here, uh, especially if we're betting on a strong game from both Houston wide receivers. Um, you have to think that if both are putting up tournament worthy scores, um, that Tampa is keeping it interesting. Since, since they're both wide receivers and a running back, um, I'd rather see you incorporate uh, a piece from uh, the Buccaneers. And then uh, Brown's D on this roster, very sharp. Um, I played them in my player pool as well, uh, actually thinking that they would be less owned than they were. Just uh, in general, paying up for, for D is not something that DFS players like to generally do. They've been ingrained that we pay down for defense. So um, uh, the Browns D didn't score a defensive touchdown, yet they were still the second highest scoring D on the slate behind the Colts, who scored not one, but two defensive touchdowns. Um, so I think my advice, not specifically for this roster, but for the OWS community in general, uh, is to be more comfortable with paying up to be contrarian at D. You know, when you get a 23, three point, 25 point score at defense, it's so valuable, uh, even if it costs you a thousand more to get it. So uh, teach me a uh, strong roster here. Thank you for the submission. And then the final, uh, the final roster we're going to review is very quickly is one of mine. 
Um, it's the uh, $12 fair catch, uh, 20,000 entrance uh, tournament. It's a Stroud skinny stack with Schultz. Uh, brought it back with Rashad White. Um, it's got a, a Jonathan Taylor and Shark mini correlation, as well as an AJ Brown and Lamb cor uh, correlation. Um, ODB um, one off. So why I picked this roster of my single entries to review is I think in hindsight, Noah Brown is a better play for a Stroud double. And then I could have used the extra salary to get up to the Saints, the Browns, or the Ravens D, which were the three kind of expensive Ds in my player pool this week. So um, I always like to do kind of self-reflection on my rosters as well. Um, I think it's a, a great way to, to grow as a player and review your process. Um, and I wanted to point out one more. I, I felt like upon review, um, there were things that I could have done better on the roster as well. So I um, wanted to say thank you to the uh, Inner Circle OWS fam. I got over 40 roster submissions this week. So obviously, I couldn't review them all on, on the stream. Uh, but please don't be discouraged to submit one for next week as well. Um, you know, thanks for for tuning in. Uh, remember that reflection is, you know, an important part of uh, improving as a DFS player. So uh, you're already you're already doing that by submitting your rosters, by reviewing them, and by watching the stream. So uh, thanks again for tuning in, and hope to see you uh, at the top of uh, a leaderboard this week. Cheers.